Okay, let's continue our discussion of frequency tables and this time talk about categorical variables. So we can do with our frequency tables uh, just as we did with numerical. It also will work with categorical. There's a few caveats, uh, but let's start off with ordinal data because it matches up very closely with what we do with our, um, with our numerical data example. So let's go ahead and do an example. So this would be ordinal data. Okay, and let's do the variable um, of, let's continue with this basketball example. And let's say at the end of the game, we will say like uh, his perceived exertion, we'll do like a Likert scale, and we'll do perceived exertion Uh, during the game, you know, if he, if he played really hard, it'd be, you know, like heavy. And, you know, if he was kind of loafing around, it'd be light. And we'll say, so perceived exertion, and we'll do, I don't know, we'll do like a four, we'll do a five point scale. So one, two, three, four, five. And we'll do uh, light, or we'll do very light. Uh, light moderate, heavy, and very heavy. We could think of a, a different scale to use, but yeah, perceived exertion like heavy exertion, very heavy, moderate, light, and very light. So this would just be maybe some personal trainers trying to figure out, you know, how the, how the players are doing. So he gives this out and we can have it still at that uh, 60, that sample size of 60 that we had been working with. Okay, so once again, let's build our frequency table. Okay. Just a second, and I'll get this all put together. One, two, three, four, five. Perfect. Okay, so we'll put that this uh, for the label up here. This would be perceived exertion. Okay, and then we would want to, let's say that we want to do this from lightest to heaviest. We could flip it, we could do it from heaviest to lightest. But if you notice, this is ordinal data. It has an order that it needs to be in, in this order because we're going from very light to a longer progression all the way up to the heaviest. Um, now, whether you do it ascending or descending, that's kind of up to you. Um, but I'm gonna do it from lightest uh, to heaviest. So I'll do very light. We'll do light, moderate, uh, we'll do heavy, and we'll do very heavy. Okay, and then once again, we are going to do our count or a frequency. We're going to do a relative frequency, oops, not capital, that should be a lowercase f or relative frequency. And then we're going to do our cumulative count or cumulative frequency, and then our cumulative relative frequency. Okay, so here we go. We once again still have these 20, so I'm gonna to try to pick some numbers that'll get us roughly to that point. We will do 15, 10, uh, 5, and then maybe we do a 20 here, and where am I at? So that's 25, 30, 50, okay. So we've got our sample size again. Frequency, once again, we know this sample size of n equals 60. That's how many of the games maybe that this guy played in over the course of the basketball season. And so we do 15 divided by 60. We would do 10 divided by 60. I'm just taking this number and dividing it by the sample size. So we've got 5 divided by 60, 20 divided by 60, and another 10 
divided by 60. Okay, with all that, we can then go and look at the cumulative frequency, or how many, how many times was it very light or fewer, or then light or fewer, moderate or like less. And so then we can go, this is 15, 25, 30, 50, and, oops, not a 5, that should be 60. Because the last one in our cumulative frequency always should add up to our sample size. All right, so from there we can do our cumulative relative frequency, which is just the cumulative frequency divided by the sample size, or it can be the sum of the frequencies. Either one will get you the same number. So we're going to do 15 divided by 60. We have 25 divided by 60. We have 30 divided by 60. We have 50 divided by 60, and we have 60 divided by 60, remember, which equals 1, or 100%. All right, so ordinal, because it has this order to it, the questions over here with the cumulative actually make sense. Think about this. If I say, what percent of the time did this player, after he had played, did he was his physical exertion heavy or lighter? And we can answer that. That's, that's a fair thing to ask. We can come over here and that'd be, well, 50 out of the 60 games that he played, he said he was exerting heavy or less. Now, we could also flip that on its head and we can ask another question. What if we want, instead we want to ask, what percent of the games was he exerting heavy or more? And you look at this and we actually can't answer it directly from here, but we can do some simple math. What we would do is we'd take 20 plus 10 and divide it by 60, or it's like heavy or higher, heavy or harder. We'd add those two up. That would be 30 games where he was exerting heavy or harder. And the percent of that would be 30 divided by the 60. There's another way that, that we could look at it. We could come over here and say, well, we know that 30 out of 60, he was moderate or less. And so if we do 1 minus this, we can say that he's heavy or above. And we will do uh, a lot more examples of this uh, coming up. But just know that there are lots of questions that we can ask uh, with regards to a table like this. OK, so from there, let's go ahead and talk about nominal. Now, nominal categorical data is a little different. So you know, remember, we're talking about right now is categorical. So nominal is a little different because, remember, order doesn't matter with nominal data. It doesn't matter if we had put, if we switch the order of any of this. So these guys, does it matter, would it matter if we switched light and moderate? And the answer is yes. These are supposed to be in a very specific order. If we switch the order, we lose some information. But with nominal data, we don't. So let's take a look at some nominal data. So for our nominal, of these 60 games, maybe we could talk about how many games were away, away, or home. It doesn't matter if the away games are first, or if the away is, or maybe in, we can add in another one, away, home, or neutral. Maybe you know they go to Europe for an exhibition game or China for some exhibition game. Okay, well we can we can handle this and it's nominal. It doesn't matter if we put the neutral first. It doesn't matter if we put home first or the away first. It the, there really isn't an order uh, to these ones. Not like there is over in the Likert scale. Okay, so because of that, let's go ahead and show what we need in our contingency table. Okay, so this is like game location. And I'll put this as home. I'll put this as away and neutral. I still have my count or my frequency and I have my relative frequency up here. And so we'll say that uh, 25 were home 25 were away, 
and 10 right at a neutral site. Okay, and we still have our sample size of n equals 60. And so our frequency is going to be 25 divided by 60, 25 divided by 60, and then 10 divided by 60. And for nominal data, we're done. We don't even need to do the cumulative frequency or the cumulative relative frequency. And the reason is, is because how many games were away or less, or away or fewer? It doesn't make sense. I don't know, is, is neutral fewer? Is home fewer? I, I, I don't know. There's no order to this. Same thing as like, what's the probability or what percent of the time is, was an event away or fewer, or neutral or fewer? I mean, like, we can technically do the math, but as soon as I rearrange this data, then the cumulative frequency and the cumulative relative frequency would change. And that's why with the nominal data for the, for the contingency tables, we can stop right here. That's all that we need. So for numerical, for both discrete and continuous, we need all of these columns. And with ordinal, we need them as well because we have a fixed order. And saying less than or greater than actually makes sense. But with nominal data, we don't need those last two columns because uh, because there is no fixed order here. Because there's no fixed order, those last two columns of um, cumulative frequency and cumulative relative frequency uh, don't make sense, so we don't need to include them.